Okay, um, so I guess just to make sure I understand the problem, I have, uh, you know, the mapping for all ASCII normal A to Z characters as being 1 to 26. And basically, I'm giving an input list and, uh, or uh, an input string of a, of a number. And I want to figure out the ways that I can, uh, you know, use the mapping that I have to convert it into actual characters. So yeah. the easiest encodings would to just have, um, I was thinking I would have uh, 1 and then 26, right? Uh, would just be represented as uh, A and uh, Z, but uh, I guess that's not entirely true. So for each of the characters, one, two, nine, those ones only have a single representation, but as soon as I have multiple uh, characters, multiple numbers, so one to nine is always going to, as their simple representation, end up being, uh, you know, A, A to whatever the ninth character is. Uh -huh. As soon as I have any character going from 11 to 26, that is uh, decomposed, right, into being uh, either uh, just each of the characters represented individually plus what they would be if they're together, right? Um, so I'm allowed to assume I have valid input. And what I think might be relevant is to, again, use a dynamic programming approach where I end up storing as an intermediate the number of ways that I can store uh, or encode, is it encode? Decode, mes decode a message um, up to some position. So for 111, I should have an array, which is initially set to uh, 000 to indicate the number of ways I can decode uh, to some position. And at each position, uh, what I should basically want to have is I can either encode the character as just what it is on its own. So uh, as, a, as a base case, I guess my first number can only be decoded in one way, right? Uh, the, the one or the nine or eight or whatever it is, it's only one way that it can be decoded. But from then on, um, what I should be able to have is that the next character is either decoded as what it is, um, Let's see. It's either also treated as a single character, so it, use, it uses uh, end minus one, uh, so that's one option, or it ends up being the previous two characters combined together, right? right. Um, which means that it should be end minus two plus one. Uh, because end minus two in this case does not exist, uh, it's set to two, but over here with the third character, it's a bit different, right? In that I can look at n minus one, I add that, and then I can also look at n minus two and add that as well, and I get three, which I see is the correct solution. So up, it should be updated that my base cases are actually index zero and index one. Um, right. But does this hold for all numbers? If if I had one 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 one. Uh, it seems like this is sort of just a repeat of the existing logic that I have. Um, is that true? So here what I would get is five because I would add, you know, the two indices previously, but is, does that hold? What I'm saying is um, I have one, one, one. And so the different characters I can have are either one, 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 or one, 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 uh, one, 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 one. Uh, let's see, I'm missing one, 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 one. Yeah. I think that's all the different variations I can have, which that adds up to five. Um, okay. Yeah. So I think this should be okay, but uh, this is only for ones, right? This might not work out for other characters. So one thing that I didn't account for is what if I have an what if I have you know 96 right? There's no way that those characters can come together. So what I should be able to do is whenever I check the end minus two, I want to check is that number you know uh, is that number uh, greater than or equal to one and less than or equal to 26? 
And only if it is, in that case, I add the int minus two. Otherwise, I can uh, skip it and I only add the int minus one. Um, and I think that should be a solution that works out. Uh, so that seems to be like the, the main logic, right, that's involved here. Uh, for complexity, what I have is, uh, I guess it's a linear complexity, right? They go of n uh, runtime complexity, complexity and they go of n space complexity, uh, where n is the length of the input string. And that's because I'm, I'm going through all of the characters once and I'm also storing that as intermediate data. Oh, it's because you actually store it. I see. Yeah, uh, like on line 102, that's my intermediate data, right? I see. That's fine. Yeah. So uh, given this, is it okay if I uh, code it out? Uh, yeah. Cool. Def, uh, num code um, on some call it S, right? So, uh, yeah, we can just, it, it seems like it's a string. So what we want to have is num ways is going to equal zero uh, of S, I guess it's just uh, times N. And I said that I would have a base case of both, uh, you know, just the first character and the second character, but the second character is only set if it turns out that the number is within one to 26. So we'll set that num ways of zero and equal one, and this should be always, because uh, the only characters I can have are one to nine. And then I will have if, if uh, s to index two, uh, S to index two is greater than or equal to one, and S, let's write it this way, one greater than or equal to S to index two, and uh, S to index two is um, convert these to characters, right? Uh, less than or equal to 26, then we would say num ways of one is equal to two. Uh, let's say plus plus one. One to the one. Cool. So this should end up setting our base conditions. And then for uh, end in range two to n, we basically want to uh, determine the number of ways we can decode, right? And in the end, we're going to return num ways of n minus one. Right. So the main logic we said is that first of all, uh, our num ways of n is going to plus equal num ways of n minus one, and this always holds. And then the next thing we want to do is determine if the uh, substring from n minus two to to here uh, fits in, right? Uh -huh. um, so we say if uh, one less than or equal to, oh, this has to be a string, less than or equal to uh, <clears throat> S from, is it, I guess, end minus two, right? End. Uh, there might be a bug in that. I can go back and visit. In this case, what we say is num ways of in plus equals num ways of n minus two. Right, so on line 118, I take the substring of s, but is that actually the correct substring? Um, if I have one, 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 now I'm checking index two. So uh, I'm at index two, uh, n minus two is zero. And so what I'm saying here is, yeah, this is not uh, correct uh, because I'm saying are the previous two characters uh, less than or equal to 26? So it should be num minus one to end plus one. 
And what this says is, uh, is the previous character and the current character, uh, is that between 26, 1 and 26? And if it is, in that case, I can, um, you know, use numways of int minus 2, right? So here I would say 11 is within 20, 1 and 26. So I would have incremented here. Uh, yeah, I think this does end up being the main translation of the idea I had into code. Is it okay if I run this on a test case uh, by printing? Sure. Okay, so print on code on 111, which was the basic case we had before, uh, which gives me three, and that is what I want. Uh -huh. And let's just check with one more. We said this would be five. And this works out, but these are only ones, right? So the more important test case we should be handling here is we should account for numbers like 96, which very clearly go over the bounds. And say 999, um, there should only be, you know, uh, I want to say one way, right? <clears throat> ah, okay, so this is also a boundary that I didn't handle, where it might be the case that my uh, N or uh, my S is actually uh, not big enough right, to handle the base cases. So if len s is less than or equal to two, uh, oof, I can't quite do that. If it's less than two, it, it's, the logic still depends. So let's just say if, uh, yeah, if n is less than, instead of less than or equal to, if it's less than uh, two. Two, then I can just return uh, and hmm. cool. So these cases worked out and that there's only one way to make 96. There's only one way to make 999 and only one way to make nine. Uh, just because um, I can't comp I can't use any two letter strings here. Cool. And for this one, I got four. Uh, is that true? Uh, how would I end up splitting up with these numbers? So there's 26, 26, there's 2, 6, 2, 6, um, 2, 6, 26, and then 26, 2, 6, right? Uh, or am I missing one here? Yeah, just because I can't use 62, there's no smaller number, so this seems like it's, uh, it's okay. Um, so yeah, I think with these test cases, assuming valid input, this will be my final solution. Mm, okay. Yep. Yeah. The other one is like, you know, an empty string, but that's okay for us as well. Yeah, that's fine.